Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Andy Nguyen. I'm with the uh, UT Health Medical School. And uh, uh, this morning, I have the pleasure uh, of uh, sharing the result of the study uh, that uh, we did uh, for some time uh, using deep learning uh, to automate uh, the diagnosis of uh, lymphoma with uh, digital pathology image in uh, the form of a whole slide imaging. Uh, so uh, for this talk, uh, we will uh, define application of a deep learning method, uh, a technological breakthrough in machine learning, uh, to big data analytics, uh, and then we talk about uh, automated uh, lymphoma diagnosis uh, using digital image. I do not have any uh, commercial interest uh, to disclose. Uh, deep learning uh, uh, and pathology image, uh, uh, machine learning, as uh, many of you uh, have been aware of, uh, this is a software algorithm that uh, can learn from and make prediction on data uh, without being explicitly programmed. And uh, there have been numerous uh, machine learning methods uh, going from decision tree, uh, class analysis, uh, uh, to regression analysis, and new network. Uh, and uh, deep learning uh, is the most uh, recent and most disruptive method of machine learning. And there are many forms of deep learning, but the one that we will focus on today is uh, a specialized of a neural network uh, or called a convolutional neural network. And of course, many big companies right now, including uh, Google, Microsoft, uh, IBM, uh, have been uh, really working on uh, deep learning for uh, many uh, projects. And uh, uh, the application of deep, le deep learning to digital pathology uh, has uh, a promising start, uh, and we think that it could uh, impact uh, personalized uh, diagnostic and treatment in the future. So let's talk about the basic uh, neural network that has been built for some time. Uh, this is inspired by biological neural network, and we do have artificial uh, nodes uh, called neurons that are connected together to form a network for prediction classification. <laughs> so here you have a uh, a node uh, that has input from uh, many adjacent uh, nodes, and uh, the node here would uh, take uh, the sum of all the input from adjacent node and then uh, get the data through an activation function. And depending on the threshold, it will either phi or not phi, and then it go on to the next uh, layer. Uh, early generation of a uh, dual network uh, do, did have problem. Uh, the, the reason is that uh, uh, the parameters uh, often do not converse and not giving solution. So you end up with no solution at all, and also the models are not scaling very well. Uh, basically, in the uh, traditional model, you have data going to the input the vector, and uh, the data go in a forward uh, propagation uh, to the hidden layer, and the output uh, would give you the output, for example, positive or negative. And the, this result would be compared uh, to the no uh, result, and then uh, subsequently back propagation uh, will get derivative uh, of uh, uh, the error signal for a learning purpose. And uh, uh, starting in uh, 2006, uh, a major breakthrough in deep learning uh, that helped to outperform uh, all the machine learning methods. Uh, uh, that's when deep learning uh, really uh, took off. Uh, and in deep learning algorithm, you have uh, a special feature of unsupervised uh, learning. Uh, this allows the network to be fed with raw data, and uh, uh, we do not know the outcome of the data, uh, but the network uh, will automatically discover the presentation needed for detection or for classification. Of course, uh, uh, even for deep learning, you do need a back end in which uh, after unsupervised learning, you still have to uh, get to the second stage in which uh, you do fit uh, the network with uh, label data you know, for uh, learning purpose. But the main part is the unsupervised learning, which has not been available in the old uh, uh, method for a neural network. And the neural network extract high level and complex data representation through multiple layers avoid problems of the just last generation uh, network. And uh, the key element of uh, success for deep learning is uh, the use of a multiple graphic processing unit known as the GPU 
Uh, and this used to be uh, no for games only, but now we know that it's so useful for uh, matrix multiplication that uh, uh, use uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, uh, channels and the GPU does allow for the hardware with uh, many channels for that uh, purpose. Uh, for that reason, stop lymphoma using this image. Uh, lymphoma is a clone of malignancy of lymphocyte in the T or B cell. And currently, we have about close to 40% lymphoma according to WHO classification. Uh, lymphoid malignancy were diagnosed in approximately uh, 280,000 people uh, annually worldwide. And lymphoma is typically first suspected by their pattern of growth and the histological feature of abnormal cell in the light microscope that uh, we look uh, at in the lab using HND stain. Uh, many times, immunostain uh, would be required for diagnosis uh, by flow cytometry or immunostain. And in addition, many cases uh, do require surgetic and molecular testing uh, and also clinical feature for a final diagnosis of the disease. Uh, due to a certain difference in histologic finding between various types of lymphoma, histologic screen often presents a challenge to the practicing pathologist. And, uh, so automated diagnosis of uh, lymphoma using this image uh, would be nice to assist pathologists in daily work. And previous attempt to classify histologic uh, type of lymphoma were based on histology, uh, with the example given on the right side here, with a cartoon showing, showing features such as uh, nuclear size, nuclear texture, uh, so on, so on. But uh, they have not been uh, found to be successful. Uh, attention has been turned to machine learning in recent years, and deep learning has uh, shown very promising results. And the uh, uh, convolutional neural network, now we uh, abbreviate as a CNN, this is not the TV channel, <laughs> this is a deep learning neural network. And uh, this is, uh, it can inspiration from a primate visual cortex. Uh, the ventral visual pathway is organized uh, in such a way that uh, uh, the different areas respond to different uh, image uh, complexity from simple to complex. Uh, and neural network CNN also uh, model the receptor cell in the brain uh, using uh, multiple layer of uh, convolution uh, operator followed by pulling layer. And so convolution is uh, an operation uh, in image processing uh, to uh, either smooth out or sharpen or intensify, enhance the image. In the CNN, it's used to extract a specific feature of the image. And mathematically, uh, convolution is done by uh, multiplying the pixel value in the image uh, by a filter, uh, also known as the kernel. And uh, uh, we have a matrix a dot product uh, here. And by moving the filter across the image, uh, you would uh, obtain the final output as the modified filter image. And the uh, uh, convolutional layer performs feature extraction using the filter. And then uh, this uh, follow in pairs by uh, uh, pulling layer to uh, condense the data. The group of study is uh, uh, using uh, deep learning to uh, diagnose uh, four different types of lymphoma. Uh, going from benign lymph node to diffuse large B cell, bucket lymphoma, and a small lymphocytic lymphoma. The data shows uh, we get it from uh, two places, uh, uh, University of uh, Leeds and uh, uh, University of Iowa. Uh, among them, we have uh, uh, 355,000 uh, slides in the first side and uh, 1,000 slides from the second shows. And we use uh, different browser uh, to uh, load the image and then uh, using uh, Snagit uh, software to uh, save 40 by 40 image uh, in JPEG uh, format. And the whole side image uh, was typically obtained with apparel instrumentation. And we use a four set of five representative 40 by 40 image for each case of uh, 22 cases. And we have a total of 2,560 image altogether. Uh, we designed CNN model using Python language uh, with uh, TensorFlow and Keras uh, library. And the hardware we use uh, Intel i5 and also NVIDIA cards support by Compute Unified Device Architecture, which allow for multi-processing uh, validation. Uh, we use uh, simply to settle the case for training. 
20% uh, of the case for validation and 10% for testing. For each case, uh, we uh, use the, uh, the result for the file representative image for each case and then uh, use a method called majority voting to see whether the uh, deep learning can achieve the right result. And the results show that if you uh, go by image by image, uh, it shows uh, accuracy of up to 95%. However, if you use the uh, case by case in which we use majority uh, voting, it achieves 100% accuracy, which is a very impressive uh, result. And so in summary, we explore deep learning uh, to uh, diagnose uh, lymphoma using host light imaging. Uh, deep learning uh, does uh, give impressive results up to 100% uh, using uh, uh, majority of uh, voting. And keep in mind that uh, CNN is designed with a generic uh, machine learning methods. So this same software can be applied to any kind of uh, malignancy, not just the lymphoma. Uh, current limitations uh, include that uh, we only have four histologic uh, lymphoma type, whereas uh, we know that in the real world, they're up to like 40 or more. So it's still not like a practical uh, solution. And also, representative image uh, required manual selection in suspect area. Because if you go to a, uh, a section and if you get into the fat area, then it doesn't work. And however, our preliminary result provide a proof of concept for automated lymphoma diagnosis using digital uh, microscopic image uh, in the pathology workflow. And we feel that uh, uh, this could be a tremendous help to the pathologies in the future. So I would like to acknowledge. Uh, many of my uh, training resident fellow and also oncologists in our uh, UT medical school who work in this uh, project. And uh, I don't know if we have any time for a question. Yes, we'll first, open the let's, forum let's for thank maybe a couple of questions. Sure, let's thank the speaker first. <laughs> and I believe there's a, there's a question over there. Thank you for your talk, sir. <clears throat> um, so you're showing looking for lymphoma using histological um, slides. There's been a lot of work on um, using computer vision to find um, uh, from x-rays or CTs or whatever um, abnormally shaped um, uh, uh, lymph nodes in general. Have you thought about like um, meowing, um, mixing um, uh, the, the, the images of abnormally sized um, uh, uh, lymph nodes with your histological um, predictions to see if, if um, one can benefit the other as far as predicting lymphoma? Does that make sense? Uh, yes, sir. I think that is a very uh, uh, good uh, uh, point that uh, you bring up there. Uh, in lymphoma diagnosis, uh, uh, besides looking at the histology of finding in the lymph node, we also look at other things, uh, clinical information, and uh, especially uh, imaging study because uh, Imaging study many times do give us a lot more information about whether data support malignancy or not. Uh, so uh, I believe that uh, the data uh, from both imaging and his histology, uh, if we can uh, analyze them using deep learning and combine them in a certain fashion, that would be really uh, give a very high yield for accuracy. Yeah, thank you for that point. We might have time for a very quick question over there. Thanks for the great talk. So uh, you sh it's very impressive that with those four lymphomas, you get, you're getting 100% diagnostic accuracy. What challenges do you see when you add hundreds of different types of lymphomas? And do you think it's going to be easier to distinguish the more common types? Or will it, in the end, be easier for you to distinguish the rare types? Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, in fact, you know, uh, uh, this uh, model is not easily scaled. Uh, in other words, uh, you probably have experience with uh, deep learning training, so it may be easy in the beginning for us uh, to look at two diseases, one normal and one diffuse lab cell. But when you increase the number of disease entity, up and up, three to four, it becomes more difficult. And so the next step that we uh, plan to do is increasing the number of disease entity, and we expect more difficulty in doing so because it's not easy to scale. And of course, that we must find a way to achieve that, otherwise uh, the system wouldn't be practical. Uh, but uh, 
uh, the more disease uh, entity that we put in the uh, um, knowledge base, the more difficult it could be to separate them out. So, yes, it's a very good point. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.